As a couple, I know people when they hear priests preaching about marriage and everything else and they'll go, oh, what does he know? I, I know well enough not to get married. But <laughs> the thing is, I know mostly from having dealt with couples that are in love, that are trying to become one as the gospel spoke about. And love is the key. That long, wonderful reading in, 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 in Corinthians is an excellent way. You'll notice the one thing, they kept bringing up love, and what love isn't is about itself. Love is always, first and foremost, about the beloved, about the other. We only get in trouble when we think about me. Well, what am I going to get out of it? When is it my turn? When are they, when are they going to do something for me? And so we get into this difficult, a difficult type of a situation where we try to turn love on ourselves, and that's the contrariness of love, that selfishness. And it's a hard thing to do. Oh, people love each other. I'm sure you're all lovey-dovey when everything is going fine, especially after the kids are in bed and it's nice and quiet at home and you've had a wonderful meal and you're feeling nice about each other and everything works fine. It's easy to love one another when everything works great. But the proof of love isn't when, when things are working out. The proof of real love is when we decide and when we choose to be loving when we don't feel like being particularly loving at this moment. All our feelings talk about the opposite, getting revenge, hurting, all sorts of stuff. Anything but loving. For us to be able to love, we have to remind ourselves of how precious that person that we love is. And that's important to do. You've heard the saying, never go to bed angry. Basically, when people tell me that, I go, too late. You should have got up in the morning and reminded yourselves of, e of each other's love as you woke up and remember it in the course of the day. I usually try to advise couples to not be married. The reason I say that is because most couples do everything right up until they say I do and they don't. Because one of the things that people think before marriage is di that's different than after marriage is that, well, you know, why don't you talk to her that way when you when before you're married? Oh, she'd, she'd leave me in a minute. <laughs> she still can, you know. I'm not going to be having anything to do with tying them at the hip. After this wedding, they are as free an individual as they want to be. It's their choice to become one or not. And it means being, like I said before, loving when everything in you emotionally is crying out for anything but being loving, certainly not being nice. But you see, that's when the hurt happens. When we don't listen to our hearts telling us how personally special this person is in my life how I wouldn't know what to do without this person in my life. My life would be incomplete without this one. I usually tell couples, when you get really angry at each other, take that marriage certificate thing off the wall and go, did you forget? Anything that you can do to remind each other of your love for each other is precious. And the reason I said, remember before you got married, is not just a whim, but what you were doing was courting each other. Continue to court each other. Continue to be specially nice to each other. 
continue to make time for each other. It's wonderful dealing with a child, but every once in a while we just want to deal with somebody that's on the same maturity level as ourselves, that cares for us the way we care for them. That's what dates are all about. So don't forget to continue to court each other, to continue to be each other's best friend, to continue to be the one that the other can't live without. That's what our prayers are for you today, that your life will always be one that remembers what is important in life is the love that you share for one another. Carlo, take you, Kara, for my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish you until death do us part. and to hold from this day forward for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health to love and cherish you until death do us part. Other than that, I'm Kara's long distance best friend from Hawaii. Most of our friendship was distant. Literally, our total time spent in person might just be a year total. And so it was definitely different to be in the same place again. There are, those things, there are things you can't learn while separated. The fact that our friendship survived the long distance for a total of 12 years separated taught me important things. Most of all, it takes energy, effort, and time to build. Distance can't be controlled too much. You don't know how many times they wished a bridge could be built over the Pacific one. <laughs> but what you can control is how you maintain the relationship. Kara, from snack buddies to best friends to long distance best friends, thank you for being there for me when being my friend became less snack buddy and mostly endless text messages and FaceTime calls. I'm sure we'll make up for the snacks and food while I'm here, but I'm so, so grateful I can't see my <laughs> I'm so grateful we did not grow apart after all this time. Jacarla, it was great to finally meet you in person. Thank you for being an amazing partner to my Kara and for being hospitable to Lucas and I. It's shocking that both of you put this beautiful wedding together in a matter of months. The teamwork is real. So is the love and so is the commitment to be in each other's lives. What I can advise from my own marriage is to remember you two are a team. Is you two against whatever comes your way, never against each other. I love you guys, congratulations. Everyone knows we're best friends. No one could understand it, even if they tried, but they understood that it was impossible for us to break apart. Don't get me wrong, we've had our ups and downs. We've had our fights that separated us for like years at a time, but look who's still best friends. So it really is Pearl forever. 
13 years and counting. I feel like sometimes we're the exact same person. We can finish each other's sentences, think for each other, but then there's days where we just aren't on the same page. But even with our differences, we always let each other do what we want. I think that's my favorite part about our friendship. The understanding that we had between each other. It's almost as if we were two different branches of the same tree. As Kara's best friend, this roller coaster ride is mandatory. Sometimes I feel like I'm in this relationship with you two. I try not to pick sides, but who am I kidding, Giacarlo? I'm biased. When Kara's mad at you, I'm mad at you. <laughs> I've learned to just not pick sides and I've grown to love both of you because my best friend loves you, so I love you. Um, when I think of you guys' relationship, the word that comes to my mind is salvation. You guys have been through hell and back, but you've pulled through. Even though you've loved and lost, you guys picked each other up and kept going. You guys grew stronger, and you've made it this far, and there's nothing that can stop you now. Life takes you where you're supposed to be, and this is where you're supposed to be. You're meant to be. So God bless the broken road that led you both here to each other. So this is it. There's no turning back. Let's do the damn thing. Cheers to CCJP. Everybody was prepared, obviously, with their speech on their phone. I am not. So I'm going to try not to take up too much time and not to blabber off to left field and, you know. So, uh, no, you don't want me to be too loud. So, um, of course, being Giacarlo's oldest brother, it's my duty to be the, you know, the protector. Um, <clears throat> of course, you know, when you first meet their loved one for the first time, you have your, your reservations. There you go. Thank you. Say, hey, the crowd's getting involved. Yee! So anyways, <clears throat> you know, nobody's perfect in life, but as long as my brother is perfect enough for Kara, then that's what matters. He first told me about Kara, about someone stealing his hat at a club. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been Ralphie's. Was it Ralphie's? Ralphie's. I was like, what? Why didn't you call the cops then? She stole your hat. And then he's like, yeah, but she stole my heart too. So I'm like, yeah. Uh, a few years later, here we are, and we got uh, Ava and that little Bronco running around. You guys see a little kid going berserk? Yeah, that's theirs, so you get mad at them. See? Love put them off, you know, put it all on them, and this is where we are today, and... Here's to forever for CCJP 2018 till infinity beyond. Let's do it. We just want to thank you all again for coming together. Um, the wedding was planned quite quickly, and we had a lot of people who came through for us so that we could make this happen this summer. Um, well, my family was on island, and so. We're just really grateful to everyone, like he said before, to our entourage, to our parents, our grandparents, our godparents, and to our family and friends, uh, and you know, also to our best men and maid of honor, maid and matron of honor. So none of this would have been possible without you. And we just thank you for um, coming together with us to celebrate our love. And um, there is a pattern in all of their speeches about love not being perfect or people not being perfect and uh, that comes from the part where if our love were to stand for anything I hope that for the people who know that we could stand for reconciliation and forgiveness because that is why we got married today so we're gonna do our own toast to ourselves, CCJP, and to our family. Cheers.